Hello everyone. Today I am going to discuss instruments used in chain surveying. In the last class, we have discussed types of tapes and chains. So now I am going to discuss regarding tapes. So where in the last class we have completed three different types of tapes like steel tape, metallic tape, cloth or linen tape. So now I am going to give you an introduction regarding an important type of tape that is invar tape. So where which is made up of by using a lot of a lot of both iron and nickel. So we have to use nickel 36 percentage. So why we are manufacturing a tape by using iron and nickel is very very important. As we discussed in previous cases, there are three different types of tapes. First one is made up of cloth. Second one is made up of metallic, wherein that we are using cloth plates, brass or bronze or some other material. Whereas in the third case we have directly discussed with the steel. Okay. So each and every individual tape it has its own advantages. But at the same time, when we come to the disadvantages, cloth tape, cloth in the sense of metallic tape, which is the combination of these two material, and uh, the third one is a steel tape, they have their own disadvantages. So that is the reason we are coming to discuss regarding the invar tape which is made up of the combination of iron and nickel alloys. So where and why we are adopting such a particular tape is very very important. So when we are able to measure a particular surface over the ground level, so generally there may be chances tape and the surface of the ground may be subjected to some abrasion or they may be subjected to some frictional. So because of this frictional effect, so tape, let us take this is my tape and this is ground level. So in between there will be some possibility for friction. Friction. So I am representing the abrasion. Abrasion. So because of this, as well as the effect of temperature over the material. Effect of temperature. Not exactly the temperature here. Not exactly the temperature here. Any environmental substances that which affect the the tape and the type of material that which is made by using that particular type of material we use. So therefore, the temperature is more. Each and individual material is having their own coefficient of thermal expansion. So therefore here, whenever the coefficient of thermal expansion of any material or some X material, if it is more, automatically which results in greater stretching of already existed length already existed length of the chain. so therefore in order to overcome this problem we need to use the material which has less coefficient of thermal expansion so less coefficient of thermal expansion where we can achieve that uh, the combination of alloys of iron and nickel will be having some coefficient of thermal expansion so I am representing this coefficient of thermal expansion of Invar tape material IPM Invar tape material is is having one by tenth part of coefficient of thermal expansion of steel coefficient of thermal expansion of steel where it is equal to some twelve into ten to the power of minus six per degree centigrade so one by tenth of this part so therefore even you got a stretching or elongation when it is subjected to greater temperature, so which is having really very very less compared to the steel material. At the same time, it is made up of two different uh, alloys. So therefore, even abrasion effect on this particular type of material is really very less. So therefore, this is a really very good advantage for a surveyor to use this particular type of uh, tape at any situation or any conditions. So that is the reason we go for invar tape. So generally this invar tape is having only 6 mm width. 6 mm width. 
it is made of 10-6 mm breadth whose length is available from 10 meter, 20 meter, 30 meter and 50 meter length which is why I have done this particular length 10, 20, 30 and 50 meter length so this is why this is really very very important less coefficient of thermal expansion so therefore less contraction as well as less extension so that is why we prefer invar tape for especially precise works precise works means for very very important works wherever you want to take really accurate data so any work if it is very 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 important means every mm is countable or every centimeter is countable in such particular cases we just uh, suggest invar tape to go through the cell okay so this is really very very important but here also we have one disadvantage that generally these tapes are having uh, less width means uh, less weight so therefore which resulting in a uh, easy easy destruction or easy failures as well as if you want to handle this in your tape you need to be an experienced person you need an experienced person or we need skilled surveyor skilled surveyor to hold or to handle this particular type of tape ok so this is a third most important type of sorry fourth most important type of tape after this we have two more different types of tapes that is uh, the next one is fiberglass tape and then after that uh, we are adding automatic recording or recordable tape so they are really very very delicate you want are they there? so so first one is fiberglass or glass fiber fiberglass or glass fiber tape which is especially only useful for homes means already constructed buildings they are, they are transparent so we are using fiberglass or glass fiber so the combination of fiber and glass can give us a transparent transparent ecology so where transparent material so this is having some divisions over this transparent material so likewise the tape but really this is not applicable for measuring of rough lands or rough patched lands this is most suitable for already constructed or the surfaces wherever the surface is really very very soft in such particular cases only we go for fiberglass tape and next type of tape is not much important one that is recordable tape recordable tape so recordable tape or simply digital tape you can also call this one as digital tape so where tape is directly anytime any type of tape if it is directly attached to a digital system so you no need to count the, the tape reading with your naked eye you can see directly so when you are surveying or when you are measuring a particular distance between any two stations let us take station A station B so this particular distance you no need to read the measurement on the scale or on the tape itself automatically it is recorded it is recorded on a display on a display which is arranged to the tape so that is why we call this one as the digital tape or recordable tape any day if, if it is arranged with such a particular arrangement then we call that one as recordable or digital tape ok so this is all regarding the types of chains and tapes next we will discuss some more major equipments which are useful in the survey ok especially in chain survey I am going to discuss that particular type of material as I have discussed in the last classes we have two different uh, materials major and minor so we have so many minor minor increments but see here now I am going to discuss with the arrows arrows 
then we have page then ranging rods ranging rods after this we have cross tops cross stops then we have offset rods offset rods plumb bobs okay plumb bobs i said the plumb bob p l u m b o b plumb bob you can write that so these are the equipments first second third fourth fifth and sixth one uh, in addition to this we have so many like uh, planimeter geometer expand so on we will discuss that a little bit uh, but now we will see uh, what do you mean by an arrow so till now we have discussed uh, how to measure the length not exactly how to measure so whenever we are measuring how tips and chains are used at the same thing for what different locations we use uh, different types of chains and tapes so now the question is first suppose in all these strips and chains cases we have discussed that all the chains if you take any chain any tape in most of the cases the minimum distance that we have discussed is 10 meter okay and uh, the minimum in feet uh, that is 33 feet uh, okay and the maximum uh, we have discussed that is 50 50 feet, sorry, 50 meter. So when we come to the feet, sir, 100 feet, 100 feet. So these are the cases that we have discussed. Maximum in a FPS system, in a FPS system, minimum is 33 feet. We have in a FPS system, and whereas in meters, in a C system, we have the minimum is 10 and maximum is 50 meter. We have discussed it. So now, let me ask you one question that. Uh, First, suppose if we want to measure a distance of a distance of sixty meter, this is the initial position. Let us say this is some A, some B over the ground. So I want to measure the distance. The actual distance between these two is sixty meter. Now I am using the tape or chain which is having only ten meter length. Ten meter length. Only 10 meter length chain is available myself. So therefore, in such particular cases, so how to measure this distance and how to count the number of chains is very 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 important. So see here, what we have to do means see from here you can measure 10 meter. After that, we will take this one is the initial position. Again, we go through measurement. First 10 meter, second 10 meter, like that. Third 10 meter, fourth 10 meter, fifth 10 meter, and last uh, sixth 10 meter. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 16 to 10, you got 60 meter. So finally, you got 60 meter, but you people want to locate, but you people want to locate a distance of some 35 meter. Actually, I need to locate an internal point. It is somewhere else in between A and B, but that internal point is a 35 meter. 35 meter. I have to locate at a distance of 35 meter. Now the question mark is, you don't know. You have only one chain, so that you have measured first 10, 10, 10, 10, and you are end up with uh, B at 60 meter. But now if you want to locate 35, again you have to come from the initial position. Okay, you, you realize this after completion of work, suddenly you have realized that you need to locate 35 meter. So it is really difficult. Again, you have to go to the A. So for that case, what you have to do is we generally use one equipment to count the number of chains. To count the number of chains or to count the number of tapes. So that particular type of instrument is nothing but arrow. Arrows are the equipment which are useful to locate the number of chains, to count the number of chains in a circle or in a measure. So after 10 meter you need to keep one arrow here. Next after next 10 meter arrow, keep one arrow, keep one arrow, keep one arrow. So therefore, so first arrow 10 meter, second arrow 10 plus 10, 20, 
third one, ten plus ten plus ten means first, second, third, fourth, fifth. At fifth arrow, five into ten. From A to this particular position, five arrows we have. So five arrows in this means A to five, five into ten. So the length of the tip is ten meter. So therefore, five into ten will be fifty meter up to here. Now it is easy. Even you don't have any chain here. It is easy to locate thirty five. How you locate thirty five? Yes, A first, second, third. That is completed. So you need to locate in between these two five meter. It is really very simple. So let us say this is initial position. Now we have five meter. So therefore, from A to here the distance is thirty five meter. So further say to count the number of chains on a survey line. On a survey line, or to locate a particular position or point. So we use one type of equipment, and that equipment is a remote arrow. Okay. So now I will tell you the dimensions of an arrow. So generally, how arrows have its own dimensions. So I am going to give you the arrow. So this will be arrow should be like this. So which are having a sharp edge issue at the bottom. Okay, this is having sharp edge. So generally it is made up of made up of thinner. In the sense the diameter, the diameter is four mm, four mm dia, four mm dia, thinner. Uh, steel wire, especially here it is not a uh, steel wire. This is a special wire. So we call it as a uh, we call it laminated. Enamel, enamel, black wire, black wire. So generally having, generally having a strength of strength. So tensile strength of tensile strength of seven hundred newton per meter per square. So this would be the strength of this particular wire. Thin laminated enamel wire, black wire. So which is having this particular strength of diameter 4 mm, and which is having a height of 400 mm plus or minus 5 mm. 400 plus or minus 5 mm, and has an internal dimension of 50 mm. 50 mm. Okay. So this is 4 mm. So whereas it is 50 mm, total height is this one. And the shoe height is 15 mm. One part, 15 mm height. Shoe will be having 15 mm height. So therefore, this particular edge can be driven into the ground at every end of the chain. So as you know, uh, brass handle, same kind as brass handle. So which has a groove, which has a groove at the center. So this sharp edge is. Penetrated in between this group, okay, B group. So this is how we can count the number of chains, okay. So this is really very very important one, arrows. So next we will see the pegs. What about a peg? And remember one thing is only made up of enamel black wire, okay. This is a special material. So next we will see peg. So when you come to the peg. So now, what would be the peg now? So this is the question. Uh, let me uh, tell you one thing now. The same way, I am making the same survey line. Capital A, capital B is the survey line. In between, I uh, have. This is already measured now. Okay, it is some sixty meter, sixty meter. Okay, sixty meter line. So there are one, two, three, four, five. Ten meter, ten meter, ten meter, ten meter, ten meter, ten meter. That's all. I have an arrow here. Here I have an arrow, 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 arrow. So arrow number one, two, three, four, five. This is the starting station, and this is ending station. Okay, starting station, ending station. So now I want to change the direction. Again, I have to measure some. B C distance, B C distance with same ten. One, 
two, three. So ten meter, ten meter, ten meter, ten meter. So you can take an arrow here, arrow, arrow. That's all. So this is the station. This now B would be the starting station. For B C, B becomes the starting station. C becomes the ending station. So now what is the use of peg? It's very 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 important. Peg is also an instrument which is used to close or to choose the end position of a change or end position of a continuous chain line. Okay. So from A to B we have continuous chains. So A is the starting position. B is the ending position. Okay. So therefore we need to keep the something here. At the position of B, and now again we have to continue the decision. We don't take the distance from A to AR. Let us say this AR six, AR seven, AR eight. Okay, so this is the continuous line. Now we just change the direction perpendicular to the point B. Okay, so therefore B to sorry. So therefore from B to C, B is initial, C is final. So we need to keep something over here at the final point. So that something is nothing but a peg. A peg. So here you need to do peg. Here you need to put a peg. So again you may change the direction and you may measure again some bit to bit. That is different. But the peg is an instrument which is used to locate the end position of a continuous change. End position of a continuous change B. End position of a continuous change B C. Okay. So this is what we call the peg. So now I will tell you what is the dimension and how the pegs are arrived. So generally, pegs are in the square cross section. So pegs may be available in both the wooden material. They are made with wooden and with iron also, iron also. But uh, when it is made with wooden, we just go through the square dimension, square dimension. But when we go for the iron. You will be having circular. Okay, so where you are side by side, here you will be having diameter. Let us see some diameter. Okay, so and they all look like this, and they all look like. So this is the wooden, which is having the square, which is having. Let if you take the cross section, so this would be like this. It is having some square. Okay, like this. Okay, so at the bottom we are in the sharp edge. At bottom we are in sharp edge, which which will come and close it here. Like this or all the edges, all the sides. So now it is having some dimensions. So this side by side is having twenty five mm by twenty five mm, or it is also available in. 30 mm by 30 mm size, 30 mm size with a height of with a height of 15 cm, 15 cm, 15 cm. Oh, this is the height of our wooden pegs. Okay. So next, uh, when we come to the circular, it is having in the shape of a rod. It is in the shape of a rod, iron rod, circular rod of diameter. Of diameter 10 mm, 10 mm, and length of height of 15 centimeter to 90 centimeter. Okay, 15 centimeter to 90 centimeter. Here also the minimum distance is 15 centimeter to 90 centimeter is also available. Means it varies. The minimum height is 15 centimeter, maximum height is 90 centimeter. So in between they are manufactured. So this is the height regarding the pegs, and this is the utility of a peg in survey. Next, we will discuss the third most important one: the ranging rod. Ranging rods. So before going to talk regarding the ranging rods, we must know what is a ranging rod. What is a ranging rod? So ranging rod is very very important. One. So let me see. So ranging rods are important. So what is ranging? If you want to know the ranging rod, what is ranging is important. What is ranging is important. 
So let me tell you regarding range. Range. Okay. So range is nothing but the establishing intermediate positions. Establishing intermediate positions over a survey line is called range. Establishing intermediate intermediate points on survey line is called ranging is called ranging ranging a line okay so how, what is ranging now we see so we have discussed in the measurement of a B 60 meter and we have measured this distance with a 10 meter chain. 10 meter chain used to measure this line, this distance. So now first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. Okay, arrow, 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 arrow. That's okay, no problem. So in order to establish any intermediate point in any location. This may be not exactly 10 meter, that may be 9 meter, that may be 5 meter. And again, you need to give some intermediate point. Means, for suppose, let us take in between A B, you are having a temple here. A temple. A temple. And you want to make uh, this position, this temple position, as an intermediate station or intermediate point. Okay? So, therefore, this may be at any distance, that may not exactly 10 meter, 20 meter, 30 meter, and 40 meter. That may be in any, any distance. So here you are going to locate a new station or a new positions on the same survey line maybe. Same survey line maybe. And after some time, when you draw well, you, you may be having some mass or church here. Again, you need to give some new position. So that may be located at any distance from here. So ranging is nothing but locating the intermediate stations or locating the intermediate points. On the survey line only, on the same continuous survey line, is known as ranging. Ranging. Okay. And now these ranging rods are utilized. These ranging rods are utilized to locate or to establish these two new positions or new points on the AB survey line. So this position and this position. At this position, you are not supposed to use pick, you are not supposed to use arrow. You are supposed to use a rod and that is nothing but ranging rod. So here also we need to go to ranging rods. So establishing the points, intermediate points on a continuous AB line is known as ranging and the rods which are used to locate that intermediate points or that intermediate stations are known as ranging rods. So now let me draw the ranging rod. So, ranging rods are generally having, so in most of the cases they are made up of iron only, they are not made up with wood or some other material, they are always made with iron, okay. So, which are in round, round in shape, therefore it will be having some diameter and at the bottom we will be having a shoe, sharp edge shoe to drive this into the ground surface ok so they are generally available in the heights of heights varied from 2 meter to 3 meter they are generally available in heights of 2 meter to 3 meter and then they are having a diameter of 25 mm to 30 mm 25 mm to 30 mm and they are they are divided into number of divisions or segments we call them as divisions better to call segments segments better to call segments so these number of segments so see so one segment will be colored and another segment is also colored so these segments, one of the segments are colored in rainy rods, okay. 
so this may be not color in most of the cases this is having the black this is having black okay so this may be red or black okay or white also or white okay this may be red black or white so suppose if it is red this may be white or black if it is red white red white in combination otherwise red black red black in combination or in white black white black and so on combination so this is how the pattern this is how the pattern this segment is the color and then uh, uh, only red black and white colors are useful in the ranging dots why the cause uh, generally uh, when we are ranging ranging may be having a daily distance you may range 100 meter distance you may range 150 meter or you may range 90 meter whatever so the color the ranging rod should be visible to a surveyor if you want to look at intermediate for 50 meter no problem at all for 30 meter no problem at all but when you go for 150 meter it is really very far from the observer so therefore in such a scenario even there is vegetation or even there is a sky anything so always these colors should be visible okay so that is the reason these colors are having high spectrums so therefore they are visible from a long distance also that is the reason red black white colors are only preferable to paint the ranging dots okay so this is painted with red black and white in segments in alternative colors so that is the purpose to go for red black white colors so now by using this ranging dots we can establish the positions so we will see what is the limited distance the maximum distance is only 200 meter by using ranging dots so between in between two consecutive ranging dots the maximum distance is limited to 200 meter okay in no case you are not supposed to use greater than 200 meter if you want to locate a new station after 200 again again you have to keep the another ranging dot but at a time you are not supposed to take a 200 meter means 202 202 203 204 and so on any so therefore this is how we use ranging dots to range the particular particular line so in next uh, we will see we will discuss cross chirp and the types of sidewalk plumber and uh, some other minor equipments thank you thank you for the session